Happy 2021, guys. It is CJ, and we are here today to talk about life after lockup. But before we get started, make sure that you thumbs up this video. If you have not done so, make sure that you subscribe to my channel so that you're here for all the other content that I put out. And as always, feel free to comment in the comment section about anything in the episode that you want to discuss. We can go ahead and talk about it. But today we'll be talking about season three, episode 24, and they call this episode criminal behavior. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. Now, this episode starts with Scott and Lindsay. Lindsay called her mom over, as we saw in the last episode, because she had discovered all of the prostitute buying and all the, I guess, wilding out that Scott had been doing when he tried to make it seem like she was the only terrible person in the house. But it turns out he had some secrets with him also. Now her mom brings over the book and Lizzie says that this is the book that she got that infamous excerpt out of the one about the plan basically to get with the egomaniac take him for all that he has and run off like a thief in the night and we all remember that and she couldn't tell him nor produce the book at the time because Scott said that you know the entire argument would be over if she would show him this book and that's all she had to do and Lindsay was like tongue-tied like she couldn't do it at first so I'm really shocked that she has actually produced a book and she says that she should make photocopies of the page and put them all over the house like Scott did or something. Now, she says that basically everything that she knew or thought she knew about Scott was a lie. And Scott has definitely been dishonest with her as so, you know, she has been the same. So she doesn't really have a lot of room to talk, but we'll let Lindsay be mad for the moment. Now, you know, she's she's just now thinking about the fact that she has uprooted her daughter from being with her mom and she's brought her here to this place and they've started this life with Scott and all of it is a lie now. And now she's worried because she doesn't really know him and her daughter has gotten attached to him and all this, which again, I don't understand why these women, you know, bring these men into their lives, into their children's lives so fast. And in her case, it's the opposite. You know, she got out of jail and she brings her daughter around him, which he had been coming around beforehand. But that's besides the point. I don't think that they were in a place where she should have even been comfortable enough to move in with him herself, let alone her daughter. But she's kind of seeing that now. And she gets a text message while she's talking to her mom. She gets a text message from Scott. And Scott, I guess, has gone away and he's had time to think. And he really feels like he doesn't want Lindsay's friends coming over. Because I guess she has had other friends come over outside of Tara Bell. But he says he doesn't want her friends coming over. Nor does he want Tara Bell moving her RV into their driveway. He's not comfortable with it, so it's a no-go. That says Lindsay off. She calls him and she is going off on him. She's telling him, you know, just because he doesn't have any friends doesn't mean that she can't have friends and that, you know, he's crazy if he doesn't think that she, if he thinks that she's not going to have friends, she'll have friends in there from sundown to sundown if she wanted to, just to spite him and blase, blase. She was just going off and so she hangs up on him and or well, she tells him to suck it and then she hangs up on him she tells us that scott is a hypocrite which he is uh, he talks about the company that she keeps yet he was in the company of the prostitutes so he didn't really have much room to talk about you know judging people's character and her mom you know, she tells her mom she's had it with him. Her mom is encouraging her, look, let's load up my truck and let's go. We can leave. She doesn't want to leave. I think that she kind of is enjoying this, I guess, 
beef that she has with Scott and she doesn't want to go with her mom because I'm sure rules will come with living with her mom. But Scott, I mean, obviously he is trying to set some rules as well and she, they're not flying with her, but she can probably have a little more control over Scott than she would her mom. So she doesn't seem to be trying to go anywhere with her mom at the time. And she decides as get back for him telling her about not wanting Tara Bell, her girlfriend, to live there. She's going to take his belongings and she's going to set them outside. She started with his laptop. She set the laptop outside and it began to rain. So his laptop got soaked and wet, soaking wet, just full of water. She throws a coffee maker outside. She throws his clothes outside and she video records it and she sends it to him. And that's where we left off with them. I don't know how that's going to end or how what's going to be next when Scott comes home. But she says that he should have known better than to F with a criminal. In more ways than one, obviously. So then we go over to Sean and Destiny. We don't see Destiny this episode, which is fine. We see little flashbacks, but that's okay too. But anyway, um, it's a day, one day until her court appearance. And Sean is saying that Destiny is costing him a lot of money, which we all know. I mean, she has maxed out all of his credit cards. He had to go into his 401k, which is in turn, you know, taking money out of not only his mouth, but his children's mouth as well. And so he's just saying that this is just getting way, way too expensive. So he calls Kelly and asks Kelly to meet him and he needed to talk to her. So she was a little apprehensive at first, but she was like, okay, you know, whatever it is, what it is. So they sit down. Well, he gets there. She was already sitting down and he tells her that destiny took off with all her stuff, but he believes that she'll come back. And Kelly just thinks he is a doggone fool, which I do too. And she says that this woman is basically using and conning you. And he, he just doesn't, he wants to see the good in destiny, but we all know destiny is not thinking about Sean. She, she's thinking about Sean when she needs money and that's the only time, but he's the only one that doesn't see that. And like I said, she maxed out all the credit cards. And this fool had the audacity to ask Kelly if she can give him some money so he can take this trip to be there when this girl goes to court. Now, naturally, at first, Kelly was like, I know good and doggone well, you are not asking me for money to go see a woman. I don't even like a woman who is using you, a woman who is conning you. And you're going to ask me for money to go and see her. And he was dead serious. He said, yeah. And she said, OK, well, you know what? I'll loan you this money, but it's going to come with a 100% interest. He asked for $1,000, which is not chump change in my book. I guess they're doing it a little different out in Vegas. So she gives him the $1,000 on the terms that he gives her $2,000 back. He agrees to do it. She cash up him $1,000. Boom. So it's done. Now, she doesn't know why she gave him the money, she says, but she says that part of her wishes that, you know, their relationship crumbles. And I know she doesn't want him to be with her. Nobody does. She doesn't even want her to be a part of his life when she is the child, the mother of his children. But I guess we'll see next episode or so how the court appearance goes or Destiny's reaction when he pops up on her. And so next we have the throuple, Lacey, Shane, and John. I always get Shane and Sean mixed up, but it's Shane. Anyway, we see John, he's driving and he's telling us that Lacey is more addictive than the heroin. He gets, you know, clean off of the heroin. And it seems like he picks up another addiction right away, which is Lacey. And he's kind of salty about Lacey getting back with Shane because he feels like they were supposed to get married. They were supposed to be together and start their life together. But instead she has moved on with Shane. Now 
he texts her and he's doing like some really weird like stalker type stuff he's sitting which appears to be on her street the way he's just parked and kind of leering you know out of the window leering you know down the street so he is parked on her street and i'm guessing what he thought was Lacey was going to respond and he was going to ask her to come outside or i don't know what he thought was going to happen but he sat there and she got the text message and she kind of looked like oh my god and she looked at it for a long time but surprisingly she did not respond now he's saying that she always does respond it may not have been at that moment but she always does respond so he does this really childish move we see shane in the backyard he's straightening up the patio furniture stuff out back this clown rides down the street blowing the horn like a damn fool and so shane hears it now production they edited it to make us think that he was going to come outside and it was going to be like a fight or something but he just kind of peeps around the corner like what's going on and that was like the end of it but we <laughs> we later see like this funny scene with Lacey and she brought she bought like a contraction machine so that Shane could get an idea of what childbirth feels like because he doesn't think that labor is a big deal and it was funny to see his reaction to it because men cannot take that kind of pain trust me I've done it twice and y'all don't want that smoke trust me but it was it was a cute little scene and it was funny to watch so later we see Lacey's dad comes over he comes over to kind of check in to see how the family is doing and to kind of catch up with Lacey and she tells us in her confessional that she still has feelings for John which is typical Lacey behavior of course now when he got locked up you went with your tail tucked in back to shane and you wanted to be a family and john is no more he's out of the picture and all of this hoopla but now all of a sudden you have feelings for him again that girl she mm -mm. but anyway she and shane you know they're going she tells her dad that they're going to have her gender reveal and her dad thinks that that's a great idea but she also tells him that john contacted her and of course her dad was kind of hot about that because he knows that john is no good he's no good for lacy you know his lifestyle is just not conducive to what she and her kids need to be around and so he was telling her you know you need to stay away from him he is bad news and he also wanted to know if she told shane and she says that no she did not tell shane her dad, like us, wanted to know why. Why are you keeping it a secret from him? That's kind of shady. That's that's very shady, actually, that you didn't let him know. And he urges her to tell her husband because Shane is really trying to do good. He's trying to work. He is trying to be that provider that she wanted him to be for the family, especially now that she is with child. And John being back in the picture can really just mess everything up. She tells us that she's not going to tell Shane that John contacted her so that's probably going to be some more smoke once he does find out that this man is out and that he is contacting his wife so we'll have to wait and see about that so then we get to puppy and amber now puppy is out and she's anxious to see her mom because last time she saw her mom she let her down and by letting her down that meant she was only out for two weeks before she went back to prison and of course that breaks any parent's heart to have your child home thinking they're going to do right. And then, I mean, the streets called her back quick. And so she went right back and this is her second strike. The next offense will be her third. And I don't know if that's life or she'll go away for a very, very long time, but, um, I'm not really familiar with the three strikes rule, but anyway, she'll be on hers if she does go back now her mom hugs her and she's so happy to see her and they're talking and her mom wanted to know if puppy i mean if amber told her that she has long-term kidney failure and that she has to go to dialysis every day well she didn't know that and so that was very heartbreaking to her to find out 
And she's like, okay, well, we're just going to have to go to dialysis every day. That's just what we'll have to do. And she want, really wants to be there for her mom. She wants to make her mom proud. She wants to make up for letting her down all these times with, you know, running dope and having to go back to jail. Now, they, their puppy immediately starts to talk about how tired she is and she wants to lay down. But that's really code for I'm ready to be alone with Amber so we can get it in. Mom was not born last night and knows what her daughter is trying to do. And so she says, well, we can make up something for you on the floor. And so puppy was like, I'm not going to be able to sleep in the bed with Amber. And so she was like, yeah, you can, as long as there's no hanky panky going on. And so Amber, not wanting to disrespect the mom, you know, she's going to obey the mom's wishes and she's not going to try to do anything with puppy and I don't think Amber was going to try to do anything with puppy anyway just because Amber is still on the fence about whether she wants to be a lesbian or wants to be with puppy or not puppy on the other hand knows that she wants to be with Amber she wants Amber to be her woman she knew that since they were locked up but it's a little different for Amber Amber's still on the fence which I just really thought that Amber was like full-fledged lesbian did anybody else think that I, I don't know I guess it's just me so instead you know they cuddle and puppy does want to talk about their relationship and Amber's like look let's just take everything one day at a time you're out you're here we're kind of in the moment right here let's just be in this moment this is day one we can worry about all the other stuff later but I'm guessing she just wasn't in the mood to talk about that so then we get to Chevelle and Quaylen. Quaylen, he had to call Chevelle private because remember in the episode, Chevelle, her cousin and her mom made her delete his number to show that she was serious about not messing with him anymore. So she deleted his number. And so I guess he had been trying to call her. And so he had to call her private to get through. And so she actually picked up and the baby was in the background like, is that my daddy? And Chevelle was like, no, which Chevelle didn't lie because he's not her dad. So, no, it's not your dad. And he was kind of upset because he heard Chevelle tell her no. And he's like, why did you tell her no? And she was like, because she doesn't need to be wrapped up in all of this right now. What do you want, Quaylen? And he's like, I just called to talk. And so she was like, mm, you still talking to your little friend, your little girlfriend? And he was silent. So that was a yes. There was a big yes in that silence. And so she was, that pissed her off. And at that point she was like, okay, well, I gotta go. Um, we're getting ready to go to Branson. And he was like, going to Branson? Who are you going to Branson with? Now, anybody that's familiar with Branson, Missouri, it's kind of like a tourist spot. And they have, you know, I guess, I don't know if it's like cabins or it's like different like restaurants and strips and shows and stuff. It's kind of like a little tourist spot that a lot of people go to is a lot of hotels, a lot of getaway spots. People go there to just get away, just to relax. And so couples, it's like a hot couples spot. Couples go there to get away, to be alone. And he was asking her, who was she going with? He was like, is my Myla going? I think that's a little girl name. And so she didn't, didn't want him to worry about all that. And so he was getting real jealous because now it seems like Chevelle could possibly be moving on and he's bound and determined to get her back. And she basically says, which she sounds like she will take him back if he just tries a little harder because all she was like, he just needs to, we got to build that trust. If he wants me back, he has to build that trust. So she'll go back, I'm sure. But anyway, lastly, we have Brittany and Marcelino. Brittany's taking her mom to like a recovery center. And I don't, it's not a rehab. I don't think it's more like counseling for addicts. And so she wanted to kind of have like therapy with her mom. Because Marcelino said that mama can't come around. She can't come around the kids. She can't come to their house 
unless she is sober and clean. So Brittany is trying to take the necessary steps to get her mom the help that she needs so that she can come around the family and be the grandma to the grandbabies. But anyway, they're there. And Brittany tells the counselor that she's ready to cut her mom off if she doesn't change. And in this particular scene, we're seeing like a different side of her mom. Whereas last time we, her mom was crying and saying, please help me. I need help. This time she's very defensive and she has an excuse for everything, every reason that she's doing something and she's trying her hardest and she just, she's just trying to make it seem like, oh, it's nothing but just a beer. I, I take my medication and I, and I take some beer. I drink two beers with it. She's really trying to make it seem like it's not as bad as it is. And the therapist or the counselor sees that also. And she just kind of watches Brittany and her mom have an exchange. And her mom's not really listening to Brittany nor the counselor. So it's really hard for them to get through to her because she's doing all the talking and she's not listening. She's not listening to what her daughter has to say, nor is she listening to what the therapist has to say. Now, she claims that she's trying her best and that Brittany doesn't see it. She's trying to do what Brittany wants, but she it's not what she wants. And even the counselor said she is not ready for recovery. So, Brittany, you've got an option. You've got an option to either accept your mom as she is with boundaries or you're going to have to exercise your cutoff game and just kind of let mom go. And she sees that Brittany doesn't want to let her mom go. So they're trying to find ways for her to accept her mom the way she is until her mom is truly ready to change. And that is kind of where this episode stops. If there's anything that y'all want to talk about, anything that you think I missed, please drop down in the comments below and let me know. Um, this, I, and I saw we have 16 more episodes of this show. So y'all know they give us 30, 40 episodes a season and I'm here for it because there's not a lot on, especially with the pandemic and the way filming has production for a lot of shows that we like has halted. They're going to still give us what we want. But if you've made it this far, I do thank you for watching my video again, please thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I will see you beautiful people in the next video. Bye.